And um, we saw your TikTok video of you dancing at the halftime show, and we thought it was so cool. So, you guys, can we give what's your name again? Colton. Colton? You guys, can we give Colton a little bit of love for showing off his dance moves? Can we, can we give a little love? <laughs> Okay, what do you say? Thank you. Yeah, so Colton, while we get started, buddy, I know that there's no music on, but I wanted to ask you a quick question, Colton. How did you learn those dance moves? Uh, when I was like six years old, um, um, I was watching hip hop, and I saw these guys do it, so I kind of practiced overnight. They're like four. Four years old. Four so, years old, really? Okay. All right. And, so, so Colton, let me ask you another question. If you were to show me just two moves right now that I could learn that are really easy, like if you were teaching me on TikTok right now, give me two moves that I could do. Can you show me? <laughs> okay, show me your two moves. Okay, so if you put your feet like this and you go like this, okay, it's balancing it. Okay, all right. And <laughs> show me what else, Colton. And also, if you want to do the backdrop death, oh. <laughs> I know how to do it. Okay, show me that. Whoa, okay. Whoa. Okay, big dog. I see you. Oh my God. Sometimes you can go like this. Okay. Or you can go like this. Oh, big dog. <laughs> right. I'm really say good. have a good every good day. I'm really good at right there. That's okay. Say have a good day, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs> All right, well, Colton, we love you, buddy. Thank you for showing up. Uh, Colton is bringing the vibe today. Joellen, if you could create another video of him, just like create an educational video, but have him doing his dances behind you. <laughs> I promise, I promise you that will take fire. So uh, good stuff, good. Colton. absolutely love it. So you guys, we will officially get started in two minutes. So thank you guys for being here. If you have an opportunity to put your cameras on, please put your cameras on. If you're going to share thoughts, insight, dialogue, um, one of the requirements and one of the asks is that you definitely have your phone on. We want to see your smiling faces. So forgive me, I am still catching my breath and I'll tell you why. So Quan, he gets here early. I'm here early. He gets here early and uh, Quan is out here setting up to do his push-up challenge. And uh, he pushed me. He pushed me. <laughs> he's like, you want to do this with me? I'm like, sure. Well, he's like, I'm going to do. What was your number? Uh, I, uh, 28 my number today. So his number was 28. He's like, just do as many as, as you can. And I think we pushed it. Kwanzo, I think we did 35, 36 or 7, 38 with, without stopping. But I believe without hesitation, we could have done 50 without stopping. Like it like. It was, it was cool. So I'm a little out of breath still, but nonetheless, we did our 38 pushups in a row. Out stopping. Check out our IG because we're going to post that in a little bit. All right, guys, we'll give it one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get cracking on this beautiful Friday, February 18th. Um, so we have some guests in the room today. We'll do some quick introductions in just a moment, but let me let everyone in the room. Uh, by a show of hands, if you're local, who's coming to the office today for live prospecting? Yes, I love that. I love that. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some scripts. We're going to have some coffee. We're going to talk about dialogue. We're going to talk about overcome objections. But most importantly, we're just going to do the work. And so I'm really, really excited about this. I think it's going to be a fun atmosphere. And we're going to do more and more of these. And we're going to rotate uh, through all the different offices and locations. So I'm stoked. Vanessa, what's up? Um, you said to bring us and what else? Uh, a computer, a phone. And just bring a good attitude <laughs> and, and that willingness to learn and grow. And so we'll have some fun with it. And um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Colette, I love the shirt. Where did you get this? Right. Yes. I love that. I um, love that. God, I, have, I, I think I, th I might have gotten, mm, gotten it from a guy named Copes around the lake. He makes, nice. uh, he makes a lot of really local Oakland stuff. Um, I know he had the heck of the heck of love Oakland from back in the day, you know, when they couldn't say hello when, they, you know, so, uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, he's a cool dude. He's around the lake. Uh, he's got those rooted in Oakland 
uh, hoodies and stuff too, with the big oak tree with the roots coming down in the back. Hey, yeah. Elias, wasn't Cope at our barbecue and uh, didn't he come? Yeah, so I think that he Old is. He's, yep. in a, he's in a relationship with Tania Sorrell. Um, they're, they're, they're partners. She's one of our yeah. agents. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 That's the oldest, yeah, oldest t-shirt company in Oakland. Yeah, he's been around forever. Yeah. Check him out. Awesome. Awesome. All right, let's Thank officially you. go ahead and get started. Uh, is Del Mar on today? It says, happy birthday, Del Mar. Well, my man, happy birthday to you to the second best dressed dude in the whole entire office. Not second to me, but second to Will. Uh, so happy birthday to you, big dog. Hopefully I get to see you in the office today. So let's go ahead and get started on this beautiful, beautiful Friday morning. Eric King is here, the man, the myth, the legend. So Eric, I'm actually going to turn it over to you. On this morning, I want you to bring us out of the tunnel, bring us out of the field on this glorious Friday morning. So Mr. Kang, if you can put yourself on camera so we can see you, my spirit animal, my newest <laughs> okay. leader in this environment. Uh, my man, take us out of the tunnel, take us out on the field on this glorious morning. What's up guys? I am uh, woke up early, went to the gym, feeling extra grateful today. I'm super stoked to see all of you guys on here today. And I'm super excited uh, to do the live, uh, prospecting workshop with you guys later uh it's gonna be a great day it's been a great week um yeah let's get that energy going oh yeah <laughs> man, i'll tell you what man um i love the shirt please wear that but before you can bring that in please cut off the sleeves i think that'd be more fitting for that shirt so um good to see you brother let's get a few more people in the room all right we have some guests on the line today. I don't know how you came here, but I am glad that you were here, regardless from all crosses uh, the nation. Uh, Joseph, Joseph, my man, how did you find out about group coaching? And welcome, my brother. Hey, thank you, Elias. Um, so I just actually got my real estate license like three weeks ago, and I'm a member of EXP, and I read in the Sacramento real estate group yesterday about joining a team and a girl, uh, Maria Dominiquez. I don't know if she's here, but she told me about Team Fast. And I just did a lot of snooping about last night and came across the link on the website. And I watched a couple of your videos on yeah. YouTube. And uh, I really like your energy, man. So I just want to know how I go about joining. But obviously, I can just you point me in the right direction after this, if you can. And, cool. and yeah. Joseph, I'll reach out to you after group coaching today. But uh, so originally from Ireland, how long have you been here in the States? I moved here in 2014 to uh, San Francisco and then I lived in Grand Lake in Oakland. And me and my wife just bought a house in Natomas last year. So I'm in Sacramento now. I'm originally a carpenter. I do uh, concrete work in carpentry, but now I'm going into real estate full time. It's just too hot in Sacramento to work construction, you know? <laughs> yes, I love it. And, and hey, guys, by show of hands, how many people just vote that he takes over group coaching because he has the coolest accent ever? <laughs> 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 right? So, Joseph, welcome, brother. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you being on and sharing the space this time. It's a very special group, so I'm super, super stoked that you're here. And I see Mary Maloney here. Mary, is that you? Well, she's here. I'm here. Hi. I'm here. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, my friend. Thank you for having us. I uh, got my team to jump on and just tap into some of your in energy and your knowledge. And we're just so stoked to be here. And thank you for inviting us. You are amazing. And I just can't wait for my team to tap into your energy. Well, Mary, uh, you know you know what? We've met many, many times. I appreciate you. I love seeing you at all the events that we're going to. And so let's go ahead and get started. You guys have a bunch of stuff on my mind. Today, we're going to talk full circle about accountability. Um, but I want to tap into our newest read. And if you guys are not reading this book, I'm going to encourage you to read this book. Um, I'll tell you a little secret about myself. I have never once listen to an audiobook. Never once in my life. I'm 42 years old. I know that a lot of people do that. I just like to hear my own thoughts when I'm reading. And so I'm not much of an audiobook reader. However you take in the information, I'm just going to highly, highly recommend that you guys uh, read this book or listen to this book. So I'm going to share a quote with you guys. And just before I get started by, um, I know, I know, Lino, I know. By a show of hands, how many people on the screen right now, and Michael, if you can remove your hand or put your hand down so we can get new, uh, fresh hands, um, how many people are reading this book? Just give me a, a reaction on the screen with the hand up. Okay. 
So one, two, three, four, um, keep raising your hands, five, six. Okay, cool. Um, I know that there's tons of people reading this book. Highly, highly recommend. Uh, so Janita said that she's read it twice already. Good stuff. So go ahead and lower your hands and I wanna share this quote with you guys because I think it's really powerful. People think of winning as this gorgeous, magnificent triumph that solves everything. Okay, let me admit Terry in the room. Okay, people think of winning as this gorgeous, magnificent triumph that solves everything. And it does for a moment. But stay in that moment too long and winning will make sure that you will never have that moment again. It's never, it's a never ending cycle, not a one way trip. You want to win, start at the bottom and work your way up. Congrats. You won, right? You got into escrow. You want to feel that again, go all the way back down to the bottom and work your way up. Congratulations. You won. You want to feel that again, go back to the bottom and repeat the cycle. You get it? Winning is, is constant, you guys. And I know that we've been talking about this a lot because I've, it's rare that I've read a book that has hit me so hard in the last couple of years. Atomic Habits, this book has definitely hit me hard. So you have to look at your day, the things that you're doing, the triumphs that you're having every single day. While it's good for the moment, I have that tattooed on my arm and time this too shall pass. That moment is going to pass in, a, in the blink of an eye and you have to go out there and create it. And you have to win it again each and every day. I'm on this winning kick because I believe that winning is active and you have to choose that every single day. So for the people that are reading winning, is there anything that they'd like to share right now in this open platform that they heard a quote, a one line, an aha moment that they've had in the last, you know, couple weeks or couple uh, pages or couple chapters that they've been through? Does anyone want to share any of their thoughts, insider dialogue for anything that they've taken from that book? And please don't be shy. We got guests on the line today. Nobody's judging. So let's hear it. Let me give you guys a moment to share. Anybody? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, who is that? It's Jewel. Um, one thing Jewel, I like. You gotta, Jewel, you got to put your camera on. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, I don't there care. I if it there she is. There she is. <laughs> um, one thing that I um, that I like that he said: you have to prepare. Um, you, you just have to be prepared about you know what's coming. You got to work at it, um, and that's one thing that resonated with me. Good. I love that. I love that, Cynthia. You had your hand up for a moment. Yeah, I love the part about being selfish and about how it's not really being selfish, because if you are helping yourself get better, more badass, it also makes everyone around you better and more badass. Ooh, wait, are you pointing to somebody? Yeah, Mark's trying to come in the room. <laughs> oh, well, I thought you were pointing at him as being a badass. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He is a badass, though, if you've ever met him. Yeah. You had your hand up. Yes, I, uh, I, I read um, Relentless right before I started this one, and I'm just getting into this one, but I'm still so pumped from Relentless. And, and I, I think that uh, the big aha for me um, was where, where, you know, he says, you just, you just un, you're unapologetic. It's just, it's, it, it, it is, it is, it's ruthless. It's like, you've got to want it so bad. You've got to, it's everything I need to be hearing right now. And it's also validating that um, I may not be the asshole I thought I was. <laughs> I'm just, a, you know, I mean, <laughs> I just, I don't have to really, I don't have to really feel bad about that because I, that's what he's describing is so much what I've been for so much, so much of my life, you know, it just, I just, I always had it like a killer instinct. I want, I want to, you know, rah, I want it. I do. And I'm just now working to get that into my, my business, you know, apply it to my business because it, you know, with sports, with everything I've ever been, you know, competitive in, um, I'm a killer. And I just, so I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm pivoting. I'm, it, it's kind of a slow turn a little bit because I'm kind of hard headed, but it's, it's, it's working for me. I love this book. I love this. Uh, all this is like just fire. I love it. I love it. Colette. And in, and in section one of the book, it states that winning makes you different and different scares people. Let, let's be honest. Some, some of your winning and some of your success is going to, to, uh, to scare people, but 
Um, Amanda reminded me of this the other day. She's like, well, you said something you read from the book. You know, winning isn't heartless. It just simply means that you use your heart less, right? You know, when you think about somebody like Kenny, Kenny is a very unemotional person until you really get to know him. He's super, super logical. And it's not that he doesn't have a big heart because he does. If you spend any time with Kenny, he has a really big heart, but he just uses his heart less. And look at what's been created because of that. I used to be the guy in business like, oh, everyone, right? Like, oh, hug everyone. I'm still that nice guy, but I promise you, you guys know this if you interact with me. I'm going to push you. It's not that I'm an ass. Asshole. It's that I want to push you guys towards greatness. And so I'm going to use my heart a little bit less. So who else? Let's get one more person that wants to provide some insights and dialogue from one thing or a couple things that they've taken from the book. Who has something else they want to share and provide? Anybody else? I'll go real quick. All right, um, go, Big Dog. Uh, hey, I'll come back to, uh, then I'll go to Kenneth and then I'll go to Shaheen. So go ahead, Big Dog. You know, so uh, I I just ordered the book on audio, uh, so because I, 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 that's how I you know uh, digest information. But I remember you know from the um, the Tom Ferry thing he said basically about obsession, right? It's like before it's like, well, I'm doing too much of this, you know, like I it, it, and then some people look at you like like why are you you know so crazy about it? But now it's like you know like uh, going back to, to what, what you know uh, echoing back on um uh, you know what, what I just heard like it's okay to be obsessed. It's okay to basically, I mean, if you really want to win, if you really want something bad enough, other people are going to see it as obsession, but that's what it takes to win. And, you know, and then I remember his quote was like, you know, um, people who uh, are obsessed about like other people who are obsessed, they're, they're the ones that's watching people who are changing the world. So, you know, if you want to change the world, if you want to make these like generational changes for yourself, for your family, shit, you got to be obsessed, man. You got to go for it. Mm, I love it. Absolutely love that. Great stuff, man. And let me talk to you for a second, man. Let's stay on this for a second, then we're going to move on. But uh, Quan's doing this push-up a day challenge. Now, you might think that that a push-up a day, all right, well, what's that really going to do to my body? Now, what it's going to do to his body is it's the compound effect, right? He starts with one today, two tomorrow, three the next day, the compound effect. So, so Quan, doing this push-up challenge, um, how has it started to shape your mind differently? What has it done for your body, mind and body? Let's have that conversation really quick because I, I see you every day and I see your post every day, bro. So what has this done for you? So so the push-up challenge, I mean, like, so what I'm doing is I'm recreating, uh, this is actually how uh, it, I, like, it got me out of the funk uh, during the pandemic, right? Because um, I went to the Tony Robbins uh, Business Mastery in January, and they talked about winter is coming. Are you going to win the winter time or are you going to, you know, be the ones that's going to get slaughtered? And uh, at that time, you know, my business was thriving. Uh, we were having like the best year of the year before. So everything was great. And then the pandemic hit and everything just literally collapsed within like a week. Right. So I, I went to that dark place was kind of like, you know, that, that place of uncertainty. And what got me out of it was uh, the group of people that I stayed in touch with over at Business Mastery. We, they started a, a push up challenge. And so. That push-up challenge literally was, we started with 10 and then we just, just kept going. I think, and we did it for like two months. I mean, it got to the point where it got kind of ridiculous. It took like a long time to do these push-ups. But what happens was it, like you're saying, the compound effect, one a day, it started to build momentum. And once you get momentum in this one area, you're like, shit, what else can I do? What else can I be doing to get momentum in other areas of my life? And I mean, this push-up challenge morphed into, you know, running um, into a pull-up challenge, into me like really getting focused in like structuring my day to study for real estate and, and, and everything. So, um, you know, and, and that's why I, I, I know like the power of it. It's, I mean, it's, it's and, and then today, this morning, I don't know if you watched my post on IG, I talked about um, the, the book by J uh, Jeff Olson called The Slight Edge. And he basically talks about like everything that's successful in life is about doing the things that's like, um, easy to do and easy not to do, right? But the cumulative effect is what's going to make you either win or lose because there's no, there's no such thing as a middle ground. Like we don't, there's no such thing as stagnation because life doesn't work that way. If you don't grow, you die. That's it. So if we're not putting something into it to let it grow, we die. But, but that growth can be, it's, it's incremental. You're, you're, if you just take action every single day, every little bit counts. And then, and then you're going to just start seeing like, exponential growth at some point. And, and so the key is just keep going and don't quit. Love this. 
And you know, Quan, and he, let's take this a step further. So Quan's doing this push-up challenge. It's it's the repetition of mother of all is the mother of all skill. It's the constant push. It's the daily compound effect. But also, how is he going to look? I promise you, in 45 days, his upper chest and his tri triceps are probably going to look a little bit different. When he's looking in the mirror, when he puts a shirt on, he's got that V. He's like, man, I feel good today, right? His lady's going to be like, damn, honey, you look good. He's going to have this sense of confidence and this new swag. If he has more confidence and more swag, how is he going to go about his life with more confidence and more swag? Because he feels fucking good. We all put on a little bit of weight in the pandemic, and I'm going to tell you something right now, you guys. I bought some pants from Gap a while back. I have giant Christmas ham thighs, okay? I am that guy that has Christmas hams. I put on these pants today thinking, all right, I'm going to wear a suit. I'll wear a hoodie five days and four days a week. I'm going to put on a jacket. And I got these pants on, and they fit, and I feel good, and I can actually squat in them. So what I'm saying is that compound effect of me just eating a little bit different, changing some habits, I felt good this morning, even though I was able to put these on over my Christmas hams. So uh, let's go over to uh, let's go over to Kenneth Brown, then we'll go to Shaheen, and then we'll kind of change the direction of the conversation. Good stuff, Juan. Christmas hands. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear, big guy. Yeah. Um, I just, through the book, I see that it's okay to be, you have to do things unapologetically. You know what I mean? You, sometimes you miss your child's game. It's okay if you got the main goal inside your mind and they will understand. Sometimes you look out for other people's worries, but you put your goals secondly. But if you put your goals first, everything will fall in line because your intentions is there. So the book is very motivating, keeps me on my toes. And um, like I said, there's nothing wrong with being drilled to win because that's the main goal. So I'm really into it. Definitely. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, that. I absolutely love it. You know, man. And, and, and I love that, that you're getting into this and I love that we're just trying things differently, guys. I'm all about feeding my mind. And I, I recommend if you haven't read it, go back and read it sometime. It's an old book, 1960s. It was written by a guy named Maxwell Malt. And Maxwell Malt wrote a book called Psycho-Cybernetics. It's actually been redone and remastered over the years. Well, Psycho-Cybernetics talks about your mind and how it's a mechanism and what you feed it and how you control the operating system. And those things so ring true to me in so many fashions of my business or my life and business. So love that you're reading, bro. Love that you're taking on new things. Shaheen, let's go to you. And then we're going to kind of shift gears here. So Shaheen, um, thoughts, inside dialogue, and you put yourself back on mute, take yourself off mute. Yeah. Yeah. So I haven't read the book, but I, I was, I saw the elite retreat. Um, and I, the one thing that I took from it was, uh, you know, he says you're, you are where you are, not because of time, but because of focus. And that's kind of where like, I've been in the same boat. I've been all over the place just with juggling my kid and, and work and working with my father. So I'm like, I haven't had a set schedule. And then I kind of just like, you know, like, Oh, I'm tired. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, like I, I push things off to the next day and then never get done. So it's like now, like I've set my, my calendar with my with my kid and I got a work schedule with my dad like I'm working these days with my dad and I'm doing these days on real estate so it's like now I have a focus I'm gonna stick to that and you know stay focused I love that and you know what Shane thank you for being vulnerable and thank you for sharing because I promise you this you're mm -hmm. not alone in this environment Shaheen I'm gonna put you back on mute um, yeah there's two things that that can ultimately stand in your way of your success in this business lack mm -hmm. of focus and lack of discipline, right? And when we think about those two things right there, it's, it's small to think about, but if you had enough discipline to say every single day, I'm time blocking, I'm doing this, this is where I'm going with my time, instead of letting my day run me, and then I get around to 4.30, I'm like, fuck, what did I even accomplish today, right? It happens to so many, and I see your smile, bro. It happens to so many of us. You have to learn how to be disciplined. No, shields up. I'm prospect. Can't talk to you right now. Can I go to lunch? No, I'm not even eating because I'm not moving until I get an appointment, right? It's like having the discipline to do that. And then stay laser focused, man, on your goals, on the activities. So good stuff. And I promise you guys, I'm only speaking from experience. I, at one time in my life, if I'm going to be vulnerable and be open to you guys, I have, I, there was a time where I was not disciplined and I was not focused and my life was a completely different, uh, in a completely different place than it is now. 
I'm excited about where I'm at now, but these are things that I've adopted over time. I learned, I had some good coaches in my corner that said, wake the fuck up, wake up, dude, wake up or else your life is going to pass you by and you're never going to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. So you guys, good stuff. I'm absolutely loving this conversation. Let's talk a little bit about full circle on accountability. I'm going to share my screen with you guys really quick and I'm going to go over to Slack. All right, guys. So last week on the 7th, you guys put in tons and tons of your guys's um, commitments for the week. And I just want to go around the room and I want to see who was able to uh, hit their commitments for the week. So let's go rapid fire through this, you guys. This is super important. I want to have this conversation. So LaSalle, are you on? LaSalle going once. LaSalle going twice. I'm here. Okay. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Good. So did you tune into boot camp and start getting your real estate business in order? I did. Um, boot camp's been keeping me accountable and I've been um, doing all the things that they're telling me to do and trying to keep up with it. Good. I love that. I love that. Good stuff. Um, let's go to Delina. I want to go over to you. Attending Fast Boot Camp. Were you able to follow through on this commitment? I have been, yes. And I've been so excited about it. <laughs> Good. I love it, Delina. Let's go to Vanessa. I commit to attending boot camp. Vanessa, have you followed through with your commitment? I sure did. And I'm loving it. That's right, Vanessa. And Vanessa, have you done all of your homework? I have. Woo! I love this. I love this. All right, Zyra, let's go over to you. Um, Zyra, call open house leads attend both bootcamp sessions set up buyers consultation and for set up my real scout did you uh follow through on this commitment? yeah loud and clear did you follow up on that commitment Hello? zyra we you hear, hear you zyra we hear you okay i'm past, i'm on the way to your open office so it's cutting off probably so zyra the question was did you follow through on your commitment of call open house leads attend both boot boot camp sessions set up buyers consult and set up real scout Buyer's consultation got canceled, but everything else, it went through. Yes, love that, love that. Uh, Dan Stumberg, are you on today? Uh, all right, we'll move on from Dan. Uh, let's go to Kwan Zhou. Kwan Zhou committed to making my buyer's presentation for Kwan. Did you commit? Did you follow through on that commitment? No, I have not, but I can still, I, today's not over yet. Oh, I love that. I love that, man. I'm not even going to ask you the question then. So uh, you have all day. If I can help out in any way, man, I'm here to support you. And uh, yeah, like you said, the day is not done. So let's continue cruising on. Um, Andrea Willis, are you on the line today? I'm actually going to check names. All right, cool. Andrea, you are on. Get my listing on the market in time for weekend open houses. Were you able to follow through on that commitment? Yes. Yes. Congratulations. I love this. Uh, Rakitha, are you on today? Okay, cool. Uh, make sure to put yourself on mute if you guys are not in. Eric, it's you, bro. Eric, 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 can you put yourself on mute? Okay, thank you. All right, uh, Paniz, at least two open houses this weekend, at least three days of cold calling, which equates to 100 calls, have lunch or dinner with at least two of my old clients and door knocking. Uh, Panise, were you able to follow through? Yes, on that? all of them, but not door knocking yet. I'm going to door knock for my open house tomorrow, but everything Ooh. else, yeah. Yes, I love that. Congrats. All I right, got Jamie. two listing appointments also on top of it. That's what's up. Congrats. I love this. All right, Janita, Janita, I got to tell you what, I've seen a new level of commitment from you. I really appreciate all of your hustle, your new commitment. You committed to track and see and make 200 calls this week. Were you able to follow through on that commitment? I did not. Okay. In, in, the, not. in the realm of possibility, would you, could you have hit that goal? I could have, yes. Okay. I, 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 this week, I made about 80 calls. Okay. Do you want to recommit or do you want to set new goals? Um, I will be recommitting. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. We'll start a new thread. I love it. And thank you for being honest. Uh, Sam, follow up and develop relationships with leads. Sam, were you able to start that process? Sam's not on, so we're going to move on. Uh, let's see. Vin Lay, are you on? Okay. Vin is not on. Carla, I know you're on. Committed to continue in my process of learning and get my buyer in a contract. The buyer in a contract is a little bit harder. I know we make that commitment, but um, tell me about this. Were you able to do the first part of this uh, commitment. 
Yeah, the first part, yes, for sure. I've been attending to every single meeting and bootcamp and um, office meetings as well and uh, watching webinars. So yeah, I've been trying to do my best. And the second part, no, because uh, well, my buyer needed a break. Um, and but I'm still following up. So um, she's still she actually I texted her yesterday saying like, how are you doing? How's your family? What's new? So I'm going to continue doing that. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Um, good stuff. Maria Dominguez, three appointments this week, social media posts two times a day, increase my database by 25, five days, 25, five days. Were you able to, to uh, complete this commitment? Yes, I did. With the caveat that the social media postings, I need to like do a business and a personal. I think no, I'm heavy no, no. on the personal. No, no. Oh, you mean a business page or you mean no, just posting um, about business on my social media channels. Okay, cool. So, so Maria, and this is for everyone on the screen today, no matter where you are in the nation. If you heard one thing from group coaching, I don't care if it's from me. This is not about me. This is about you. If Carla spits some fire, if Cynthia spits some fire, if Ken spits some fire, if Kwanzo spits some fire, repurpose that shit. And be like, hey, guys, I was on group coaching today. I want to share some thoughts and some insights that I learned from the group while I was on group coaching this morning at 830. Share with them, right? Hey, Maria, I'm actually seeing homes in the Vallejo market. And here's some patterns and trends that I want to share with you guys. Hey, guys, we were at our team meeting the other day. And one of our team members talked about they had 50 offers on a home in San Francisco that was listed at 1.2 million. So if you're going to ask me if the market's cooling down, my answer is 100% no. Now, are you waiting for a cool down? Or are you waiting for the market to crash? Because no signs in our local economy, especially in the Bay Area, are any signs pointing to that. If you want to have more of a conversation, click the link below to schedule or above to schedule some time with me. And I'd love to share my thoughts and insight about the market and where it's heading. That's it. It's like you have the ability to do so. Stop overthinking it. Just stop overthinking it. You have a, you are a ray of sunshine, Maria. People listen to you because the way that you convey messages and your energy, people automatically gravitate to you. You have an audience, spit some fire, but good job reaching your goals. Joellen, going to door, I guess that's door knock. Door knock, yeah. <laughs> a specific home to see if they are, uh sell to your buyer call 10 right. expired listings do my first buyer's zoom consultation log all my work eating healthy exercise were you able to follow through on this commitment not with all of them i did door knock a specific home from a buyer up in vallejo wanted me to go to fairfield i did that found an off-market house gave them the information um buyer consultation i didn't because we kind of did the consultation during the um the open house Okay. which they've already been buyers before, um, but I did get them approved with my lender and now it's Ira and I fire. Okay. Um, didn't call 10 expired listings. Um, I did log all my stuff in Sisu and I ate healthy, but I didn't exercise. So. All right, cool. So in the realm of possibility, could you have done the 10 expired? Um, yeah, I could have. I just had a lot of things that I, I'm doing different things like probate with Kevin Mack magna i'm doing like so many things but today when we get on the call i want to look into doing that cool let's do that then and listen um I, I don't want anybody on this call to take any type of shortcuts doing a driveway buyer's consultation is not in the best interest of you or the client because to explain contingencies to explain what happens when you actually write an offer to explain your strategy to talk about point of sale ordinances, to talk about your TC, what happens when you actually get in a contract. If I'm just standing there, who am I speaking to? I am speaking to the auditory learner. They might be visual learners. They might be kinesthetic learners. Take the time, no matter what, to say, here's what we do next, you guys. I'm going to take you through a buyer's consultation. I do this with all of my buyers, no matter how many homes that you purchase. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you my strategy and how we get offers accepted in two days market because it's different than it's ever been we do that on zoom it's about 30 minutes do you guys want to do that tonight or tomorrow see what i just did i'm breaking contact with my eyes and saying you guys want to do that tonight or tomorrow i'm going to send you guys the invite right now they're not going to leave you hanging right but if i go like this do you guys want to do like i know you're on zoom probably six hours a day um do you want to do this like zoom call me and kind of go over the buyer's consultation with you 
no, nah, we're good. We'll pass on that. Fuck that. This is part of the sequence. This is part of what we do. Just like after you see homes, they want to write an offer. What are you going to do? Okay, cool. Here's what's next, you guys. Let's hop on a Zoom call. We're going to go over disclosures. We're going to go over comps. And we're going to really talk about our strategy and writing the winning offer. Let's do that next. Now you've prepared all of that. Now I'm going to get the RPA together. Last final Zoom, you guys, is we're going to do a Zoom call to go over the RPA so you guys know exactly what you're signing before I send it out. We can make any last minute revisions, right? It's a sequence of you setting the tone for what's coming next. So Joe Allen, good stuff. Looking forward to seeing you in the office today. Jason Taylor, 10 calls a day and building a schedule that I can stick to. Were you able to follow through on this commitment? I was able, I, it was hard to make the 10 calls a day because I don't have enough leads to make the, the 10 calls a day. So I was able to do like five a day. Okay. Um, and then for the last, like yesterday and today, I don't have any more leads to call. So that's a wrap for that. So I guess I could just keep calling people who didn't answer. And in the building the schedule, I tried, um, I built the schedule, but I don't know how, how productive it is. Okay. We'll, we'll go over that. Are you coming to the office today? No, my, my I, I sent you a message on Slack. My son has a dentist appointment. Okay. And, yeah. yeah. We'll connect and we'll connect about your our one-on-one. Let's go through three more. Uh, Terry, were you able to put um, Burke, Burke, Halter, Burke Halter Ave on pending status? Pending. Yes, yes. How many days was it on the market? 30 plus. <laughs> Well, but, yeah. what was, but what was interesting, the, the buyers that um, are in the pending status right now, they came in without their client. Well, I mean, without their agent. And so when I was talking with the mother who's loaning the kids all this money, we just really connected because she was the one going under the cabinets. The kids are just like, OK, she's giving us the money. She can pick whichever one she wants. Once I connected with that mom, it, I knew it was going pending. Her sister, the uh, her, she went to the same school, high school as my sister. We both were born and raised in San Francisco. We didn't even have to talk about the house. It was already sold at that point. Because there awesome. was a trust, there was a trust there. Love it, I love it. Congratulations to you, Terry. Let's go to two more people. Let's go to Jeff Phillips. Jeff Phillips, work out four times a week, at least an hour, meditate, yoga each day, read 10 pages of the day, get buyers uh, appointment, attend fast boot camp, and get headshots done. Were you able to follow through on all these commitments? All of them, but one. I didn't. I wasn't able to get my buyer into a showing. They just weren't. I was sending them videos, sending the everything. But today, I'm going to do something unorthodox. So after we do the cold calling, there was a couple of houses that were out in Oakland that they were interested in um, that are vacant. So I'm going to go do a real walkthrough for them, and then I'm going to send that to follow up boss. I love that. I love that. Good stuff, Jeff. Uh, let's go to actually two more people, Chris. To see your beautiful face and then Christine will end up with you. Chris, Chris said he's committed to this week to making a minimum of 10 calls a day to leads and SOI, making my 75 hard uh, program, uh, getting a listing agreement, signing and connecting with buyers. I've been putting off and showing them homes. Were you able to follow through on this commitment? I, follow, um, I haven't done the 10 calls a day. Um, that's one thing I do while I was running around, but I need to commit to making um, time blocking for that. Um, I'm on day 40 two or something on the Sunday um, five hour program, 22 pounds down. Um, so I'm feeling great, man. I got more energy. It's Look good too. You, I like your haircut, bro. You're looking oh, sharp. Thank you. You know, got, got that little fade, <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, I'm feeling great. Got great energy. Um, the listing agreement, I'm having it signed this week. I finally got the pest work done with my contractor, the roof cert. Uh, my maid's going to go in there to clean it all out. So I'm gonna get a listing agreement for 800K on a golf course over here in um, Sacramento. So that's getting done. Uh, yeah. Me and Will actually got a new listing coming on Monday as well. So we should have right. two fast listings coming to the market um, next week. Um, oh. um, I got buyers I'm showing homes right now constantly getting outbid, but I'm gonna keep trucking, keep putting it there, keep keep um, setting expectations, keep them motivated to not quit and um, just get better every day. Let's go. I love it, Chris. I love it, Chris. Good stuff. And then, Christine, let's wrap up full circle with you. I'm committed to putting in two offers this week. I will place my order form for door hangers and mailers. I will post two videos on social media this week. I will knock on 50 homes this weekend, and I will host one open house. Were you able to follow through on this commitment? Um, Most of them, but not all of them. Um, so
house I did, the um, two offers I did, and then the social media, I just have to edit it, but I shot everything, and I'm actually going to shoot a little more since I'm just on now. Um, and then the 50 doors I have, and I wanted to do it this weekend, though. So it helped yeah, so, me. So, so listen, as soon as you said 50 doors, you like, you closed up a little bit, right? <laughs> right? So I can, I can feel that, and we can all feel that with you, right? But here's the thing, and we're going to talk about this more today in person, but I want you to imagine this. Imagine how does your business change if you went on two to three appointments every single day, real estate appointments, right? How does your business change? And then if you were able to do that every single day, how does your life change over the next year, right? There's people in our environment that made $350,000 a year. A year prior, they made 65 Gs. Let's just think about that, right? What does that mean for your life in business? So it's not that I have to go door knocking. I get to go door knocking and I have an opportunity to potentially make $30,000 in one check. One check, right? It is my, I remember when I got my first $36,000 commission check in real estate. Guess what I did? I cashed that shit in the 20s. <laughs> I swear to God, I cashed that shit in the 20s, right? I'm a kid from the streets, right? I was like, oh, I'm gonna get the 20s. And like my, my ex-wife, if you guys know, I was married at one time in my life. My ex-wife, she's like, what are you, she's like, you're going to get rolled up on. I'm like, nobody's going to roll up on me. <laughs> She's like, do not cash your check. Anyways, Christine, it's life changing, right? So it's like, it's not that I have to go door knocking or I have this fear. Hey, listen, at the end of the day, what if, what if these clients are sitting on so much equity and wealth and they're sitting on a 4.5 uh you know interest rate because they don't give a shit they're just older they sit on the porch they drink you know iced tea and they just don't know what they're sitting on here you are to say you know what this is the hottest hottest real estate market that we have seen in the last 10 years have you ever thought about capitalizing on this and moving to arizona so you could be with the grandbabies and enjoy this next part of your life like you're welcome you're welcome so you get to be this great emancipator of the dream and bring value to the consumers and educate this community. Cause some people, we live this, we know what's going on. Some people aren't looking on Zillow. They're not looking on Redfin. They don't give a shit. They don't care. And here you are to be. So I'll tell you this in the next couple of weeks, I got to talk to Eric about this, but I want to get us all together. I want to huddle up in the neighborhood and I want to have our black shirts on. And I'm like, Christine, you go with me. Megan, you go with uh, Eric and the rest of the people. Let's just go. And we're just going to knock on doors and we're going to provide some value. And they're going to come. Oh my God. Oh my God. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Here they come. Right. But what are we doing? We're out there. And hey, how are you guys? Just want to, we're in the neighborhood. We're the largest real estate team in this area. And we wanted to provide you guys some great news and congratulate the neighborhood. Values are up 22% year over year. Just want to bring you this flyer. Here's a QR code from HomeBot. If you ever want to check the values of your home, any questions, let us know. Follow us on IG. Cool. And I'm going to keep trucking. Think about all the videos we're creating, the connections that we're making and the appointments that we'll get from that. I'm excited. I have goosebumps talking about this shit because Christine, I'm in your corner way to do the things that you said you were going to do. And listen, you still have two and a half days. You still have two and a half days. Is it going to be nerve wracking? Yeah. Are you going to sweat a little bit in your armpits? Absolutely. But what's going to happen is you're going to find a rhythm. Like, oh, oh, they were so nice, right? You're going to have the dick. Yeah, we're not. And then you're going to knock on the door. And Mary's going to answer the door. Hi, hon. How, you know, it's so sweet. You're dropping by and you're going to have a 20 minute conversation with a lady that is going to change your life just because she's so sweet to talk to. And you're like, damn, this sales thing's actually kind of fun. <laughs> it's it's, it's kind of fun. I promise you it will happen. So Christine, you have my 100% full support. Good job. You guys, uh, Cynthia, if you could do me a favor, if you can start another channel. I mean, another conversation, same thing in general channel. And I want you guys to put your commitments for this next week. I love having this conversation. We're going to do this full circle every single week because I think that it's really powerful. Jeff said a word earlier. Um, he's taking an unorthodox approach. It's really hard to see 
on my screen back here, on my wall back here, but I wrote something on here and it says, don't be myopic with your approach. Does anybody know the definition of the word myopic? Anybody? Anybody want to try? Anyone Googling it while I'm saying it right now? Don't be boring. <laughs> All right, so I want everyone to, uh, uh, to Google the definition of myopic right now. Let me know when you have it. Whoever has it, please grab the mic and, 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 and tell me what that is. Nearsighted. Yeah, nearsighted. Lacking, Lacking imagination. imagination. Totally. Okay, so let's stay there for a second. Here's the thing, you guys. We talk all day long about the different strategies for you to develop business. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to be myopic in your approach. And let me elaborate on this. Being myopic in your approach means that you are not trying different things, that you're not being creative. When I think about who's on the screen, no matter where you come from in the world, no matter what age you are, think about our team. We have people on this team from 19 to 65. We have people from all different walks of life. We speak 17 plus different dialects on this team. So there is no other team as different, as diverse as this team right here. What you have to say is like, hey, I might not yet be great at video, but God dang, I am, I'm a creative writer. I've been a creative writer for many years and am I leveraging my creative writer gene to develop business? Um, I took acting, I was a drama major. I wanted to work on the radio station. When I was 19 years old, I won a radio station. Uh, uh, I won a, a bid on a radio station in Los Angeles. I beat out 500 people to win that. So Rax on Sex is best on Wax King. You should be one of 1.5. You're a winner if you know the phrase that pays, right? So it's like, do you have that? <laughs> do you have that in you? And I promise you, you do. Are you using email marketing? Are you using video? Are you using text messages? Are you making phone calls? Are you using slide dial to send people voicemails? You guys, don't be myopic in your approach. Try different things. Be creative. Say, you know what? I'm just going to try something new. I'm going to say this and see if it works. And if it doesn't, who cares? You move on. Some will, some won't. So what? Next, and you move on. We have tried so many things in this company. Kenny and I have had so many ideas. Some of them didn't stick, but a lot of them did. Look at where we are now, right? Look around. Look how much we've grown as a company. So I want to encourage everybody not to be myopic in their approach, to try different things, to approach this business in a very, very universal way. You guys, there's no one way. There's tried and true methods that have always worked, but does that necessarily fit into who you are? I don't know, but don't get crippled by doing nothing. We say this and we say this all the time. Is that cat getting your dog, Cynthia? I, I love what's going on in the background there. The, the two dogs are going to town right oh, now. I, I love this. So, so I say this all the time, you guys, that action trumps everything that you're going to do, right? I'm not good on social media. I've had this conversation recently. I'm not good on social media. Let me check out your social media. I pull up the social media and there's no videos on social media. So how do you know if you're good on social media if you're not trying, Right? If you're not trying and putting stuff on social, how do you really know if you're good or if you're not? Once again, you guys, and I want to just burn this into your mind. Action first. The action leads to what? The experience. The experience then leads to what? The feedback. The feedback is then going to give you the necessary skill set that you need to build upon. That is the foundation of growth. It all starts with action. You guys, I want to go around the room. I want to hear from some of you guys. I want to hear some of your key takeaways from today's day together because you guys brought the fire, you brought the energy, and you brought some uh, excitement. Hey, can somebody let Zyra in? Uh, Zyra, um, I'm going to remote open the door for you. Uh, so just go to the door. And I'm going to open it really quick for you. Oh, here comes the call. All right, let's go around the room. I want to hear some key takeaways from some of our guests and some of our, our team members. Thank you. Um, let's go to Megan Foss out in Northern Virginia. I had a fortunate opportunity 
to meet her, wonderful spirited person. Uh, we went to lunch after one of the sessions. And so uh, Megan, thanks for being here. What are some of your takeaways from today's uh, coaching session? Yeah, it's, it's uh, powerful to have people actually voice their goals and then whether they're committed to doing it or not and the follow-up because that's like you can say what you're going to do but are you going to do it are you going to hold yourself accountable and like it's really awesome to hear the people that follow through and the ones that didn't that like took ownership of it so i think you know we in this business you're going to get out of it what you put into it so it's just mm -hmm. really like rewarding to hear everybody like who really wants to make an impact and and grow i love it i love it you know what i didn't ask and i learned this from chap um, I don't ask why, right? Because if I'm asking you why, Maria, why didn't you do that? What is Maria going to say? Well, uh, you know, some stuff got in the way. Um, yeah, well, I was with my friends and so we ate fast food. Like, I don't want to hear the fucking excuses with all due respect. I don't. I want to hear, could you have done that? Yes. Are you ready to recommit or do you want to set new goals? Cool. Let's move on. Right. So, so Megan, thank you for being here. Appreciate your insight. Uh, Chris Edwards is here from you, big dog. Uh, key takeaways from today's time together. Um, winning starts at the ground level and it takes time. And once you get there, it's uh, it just happens all over again. You just, the, the process just keeps starting over. So don't get comfortable with your, with your, with your wins. Um, just keep going. I said, just keep pushing. I love it. I love it, big dog. And, and you know this more than I mean, you're an athlete, right? So mm -hmm. you understand this. So you might have won the championship. Well, that championship is done. At the moment, it's fleeting. And what happens? Everyone goes back to zero, right? Everyone has a chance to go to the, the playoffs. Everyone has a chance to go to the big game. Everybody, right? You start at zero. And it's what you do in between that time is what gets you there. That's right, big dog. I appreciate you. Um, Dan, will come to you next after Paniz. But Paniz, go ahead. And Dan, um, if you're going to talk, we just ask that you have your camera on. So Paniz, let's hear from you and the pup. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking what we did was really helpful because I'm usually really hard on myself and I'm always like, you got to do this. And once uh, I have a commitment in my head for a week and I can't accomplish it, I'm always like really hard on myself and really trying to see why I didn't do it. But hearing other teammates also, everybody, um, you know, has this struggle that you're trying to commit and then, you know, it's life. It's just good to like recognize why you couldn't do it and just like, you know, commit for the following week. Um, I, I think that was really powerful. And you know what? Congrats on all your success. She's been crushing it, getting listings. And it's like, you can't have the moniker list with Paniz and not go out there and get listings, right? So it's yeah, like, it's I, I love it. I love what you're doing. Uh, Dan Sunberg, let's hear from you, big dog. All right. Uh, so, uh, my takeaway, I jumped in a little bit late, but uh, big time commit and take action. I mean, that's kind of the name of the game is just take action, take action. And I'd like to share a little bit of a success, Elias, from ins some inspiration I took from you uh, and also Paniz. Uh, I, I personally am pretty uncomfortable on social media and fall in that category of saying like, yeah, I'm, I'm bad at social, I'm bad at social, but committed a couple weeks ago to just doing it and just posting stuff and trying uh, and in the last, the last week, I, I've had a post that got one like, uh, but then I also had a video that's had 4,500 views, uh, which is just, I am blown away. <laughs> so uh, it is it, just trying different things and committing to doing it, and it's starting to pay off. So I'm pretty yeah. stoked about that. I, 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 once again, I have chills. This is the third time in this call. Like, I love that. I absolutely love that. You never know, you guys. You could be one video away from changing your life. Look at the dude on the skateboard with the ocean spray and the Fleetwood Mac song. One, one video away from absolutely changing your life, you guys. So love that. Great stuff, Dan. I absolutely love it. Liz, um, I'm going to go over to you really quick. And we met Liz yesterday on a call. Thank you for being here. Liz, key takeaways from today's group coaching. Oh, hey, yeah. I also logged in a little late because I was having some technical issues, but I'm glad I was able to finally get in but my my biggest takeaway is what, what you mentioned about uh what happens i mean what happens when you actually take action and you make those calls like how you mentioned like this agent started at sixty thousand one year the next year he actually did the work put the work in and made the three hundred thousand. so you have to focus on the end goal you know what's going to happen what you know if you make those calls that's right that's right and liz thank you for being here appreciate you being on thank you for having your camera on 
Um, so, so Molly, I, I'd love for you to say something. I know that you don't have your camera on, but if you could put your camera on, do you have a quick second to chime in here? My, my fellow senior leader in this company. All right, cool. We'll move on from Molly, but if you do have a chance to chime I'm in. I'm sorry. I was okay. like setting up high note accounts for people. Sorry. So Molly, I mean, uh, I, you know, I'm thank you for being here. It's really important for me that you're here. I know. You know, we've been on this journey since day one together. Um, you know, what were some of your key takeaways and from what you heard from, from our team members? Um, I heard, I mean, I heard a lot, like, um, I chimed in earlier in the chat, but, um, I love how everybody drops their commitment. Like this is my first coaching call with Elias and I don't come on because he does hold you guys accountable. And if I say something, he's going to hold me accountable. And my <laughs> life is like chaotic like between work and family and stuff. Um, but you guys are really kind of like inspiring because I'm like, damn, if they can put a commitment up there, you know what I mean? Like I should be able to do it. Um, but a lot of you guys just really drop gems to kind of what I consider common sense. Um, and I don't mean that in like in the least bit trying to be disrespectful, but like you guys have it, you guys have the tools, you guys have the collaboration to succeed. And I'm like, the more that you come on and the more that you're vulnerable and you realize that even if you set a goal and you don't make it, it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that you failed. It's like, get up and try again. You know what I mean? Um, nobody's perfect. What might work for somebody else may not work for you or what works for them. You put your touch, your spin on it and you create your own path to success. Like, um, but yeah, no, I, I love it. So maybe I might come on like a little bit more, um, more often. I appreciate you. And, and, um, I, you know, I'm super, super grateful for you. Just so you guys know, Molly and I have been rocking together, uh, for about three years now. We've been on a leadership team since climb real estate and we're here rocking together. And so, Molly, appreciate you. Love you. Zyra, you had your hand up. So once you come full circle, why don't you be our last speaker of the day and let's have you uh, wrap up. So uh, Zyra, go ahead and take it away. You had your hand up. Okay. I love what Molly said because sometimes we think, oh, because you didn't reach your goal, it's like the end of the world, but it's really not. You're farther along than you were if you wouldn't have set a goal anyways. Um, with that being said, um, I love today's group call. I got my energy drink ready. Ah, I'm so nervous to make these calls, but let's go, guys. Ah, I love it. I love it. Did you bring me a, a Celsius? Ew, Celsius are gross. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. But taking a shot of pre workout in your mouth and then chasing it with water, that's not gross. It just hypes okay. you up. It just okay, hypes you up. <laughs> All right, you guys, listen. Um, you know, don't be myopic with your approach. You know, I have a lot of time on the road this morning. I spent an hour and 45 minutes. Two ways to think about this. Uh, I have an hour and 45 minutes on the road. No, I get to be on the road for an hour and 45 minutes because that's time with myself, my thoughts, my podcasts, my videos from YouTube. So when I come in, I'm not trying to get ready, you guys. I'm stay, I stay ready. I'm prepped and prepared. I owe that to you guys, and I owe this to this fucking company, and that's why I show up, because I believe in the vision of this company, and I believe in each of you. So don't be myopic in your approach. Take action and commit to the things that you want to achieve in your life. Make sure that we load that uh, channel up in Slack with everyone's commitments for the week. That way we could come back full circle next Friday and talk about those things. I appreciate you guys and not in this, oh my God, hashtag grateful. Like I truly, truly am filled with emotion for the amount of gratitude that I have for everyone in this company and all of your guys' efforts. So if you're coming into live coaching today, let's get ready to hit the phones, have some fun, make some calls, make get some knocks on the chin, but I promise you we'll come out of this better. So peace, have a wonderful day, and I'm gonna encourage everyone, why don't you make a video or two today? Just saying. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.